We use the platform technology, the industrial biotechnology, many of you are familiar with. Uh, industrial biotechnology requires integration of genomics, application of new biochemical pathways, where you can manipulate the pathways in the microorganism to, to divert your carbon source and energy source towards a desired product. And also, we require molecular biology, control of synthetic process, and <coughs> biosynthesis. And of course, for the large scale production, we need to have process control. We need to know how to scale up these processes to get high yield, better processes for low cost chemical uh, production. So, these are the platform technologies on which the industrial biotechnology is uh, based on. I'm sorry, it's called the last slide. potential areas of industrial biotechnology applications. But as I said at the beginning, it's not an exhaustive list, but uh, because of the limited time availability, I thought I can discuss only some of these uh, ones. One of the major areas I pointed out is the industrial biotechnology application will be in the production of fuels and platform chemicals from the industrial doses. The sense when we say it's a platform chemical, is a chemical you derive by, let us say, a biotechnological process. Then afterwards, you can use that chemical and then go by your yeah, chemical technology route to produce various uh, uh, products. Um, let me go one by one and give you one of the potential challenges which are there. Of course, many of you are familiar that how we produce how the technology that is involved in the production of uh, or the conversion of the glucose materials into ethanol. Ethanol is a fuel which can be used to supplement, let us say, gasoline in your automobile because many of the countries like Brazil, they replace almost about 20 or 30 percent of the fuel, right, by means of uh, ethanol. They don't need to depend upon the petroleum sources. But then India being an energy demanding country where the population is increasing, the requirements of energy is uh, very high. There are many industries, there are many companies which are looking into the possible conversion of this lignocellulose material, agricultural materials, into useful uh, 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 yeah, 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 energy like ethanol. Of course, one can produce ethanol, one can produce butanol. There are other possibilities out there. But the, the main parts which are there in the production of biofuels from lignocellulose material involves the use of the lignocellulose, which could be a, let us say, a rice straw, or bagasse, or wheat straw, or any agricultural byproduct. Then we do what we call the pretreatment, right? That is actually most the difficult step in the process of the conversion of lignocellulose to ethanol, because all these lignocellulose material have a protective coating called lignin. That lignin has to be removed before the you get an access to the cellulose material. And all of you are familiar that cellulose is nothing but a number of glucose molecules put together. So if I can take out the cellulose in a pure form or in a more or less pure form, and then use an enzyme to hydrolyze that into sugar. Then of course I can convert that by means of fermentation into uh, into various products like ethanol or butanol or any other product. So the first step is pretreatment. Then comes the cellulose. Cellulose enzyme is there. Which enzyme splits those long chain of cellulose molecules into small molecules of glucose, and then do your fermentation. Then do your distillation process. Then of course it's there now ready for let us say charging into your automobile for running those vehicles. But what are the, uh, what, if you look at the cellulose, right, this is the, uh, this is a uh, protective layer, this is the cellulose structure, there is a protective layer of uh, lignin is there, there is a polyphenol material. What we do is by, by, by means of pretreatment, we break that lignin structure and then make this enzyme to penetrate through that, uh, uh, or the, uh, attack those pretreated uh, cellulose or hemicellulose and convert them into sugar, in hydrolysis. Hydrolysis goal is to break down the cellulose into its component sugars using enzyme preparation. So we can see that there is a lot of challenges there. There are many technologies out there which are already available, which can be used for the uh, uh, pretreatment, but none of them are suitable for all types of lignocellulose material. As an industry, we would like to have one process which can take care of 
all the raw material. Right? We don't want to have different processes for different raw materials. But we cannot say that I have one process for removal of lignin for rice straw. Then I have an entirely different process for the removal of lignin from my gas or a peach straw. But we would like to have a technology which can take care of all the raw materials that you feed. For example, in the, in the chemical or petroleum refinery, whatever may be the kind of crude that you get from different sources, different properties, all you feed is you feed it into your distillation column, adjust some of the process conditions, and it's able to throw out the product, which is, uh, let us say, different fractions of the petroleum. The same way, you would like to have a technology which can be applicable for all kinds of raw materials that you produce. For example, if you look at, let us say, the properties of uh, beach straw, it depends upon the, the climatic conditions, it depends upon the place in which it's grown, the soil in which it's grown. So all these variations are there. But then if these variations are there, then we need to fine tune our process so that for each of those raw materials, the process is able to take care of the variation and able to get the yeah, yeah, delignified material which can be used for hydrolysis and production of that uh, glucose material. So here is a challenge where <coughs> making cellulose more accessible in the enzymatic breakdown of hydrolysis and cellulose in cellulose sure. So here is why one can do a lot of research, try different technologies. For example, new solvents are coming, what are called the ionic liquids, which can break down the cellulose structure. Right? Or it can completely cellulose the whole cellulose material right, into the soluble form. If they are in the soluble form, then you have easy access for the enzyme to break it down into glucose uh, uh, molecule. Okay, uh, anyway, this is the same thing.